Let's bring in uh, a former Blues then who was at Stamford Bridge for that incredible comeback victory over Manchester United. Good morning, Scott Minto. How are you, Scott? Morning, Scott. The, Scott the hunk. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I've been listening to Dino. He, he is absolutely brilliant, isn't he? And um, I have to say, there's nothing like having a sense of humour and, and Dino's right top of the list with that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, let's... Oh, oh, oh Dean, oh, turn no. your phone oh, off. No. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't realise I was on. Oh, Sorry. Dear. Golden um, rule. Right, indeed it is. <laughs> uh, fine for you, uh, certainly. But l- let's talk about this game, shall we? Because Quake, who's there talking about... The inconsistency of Chelsea, they just are a difficult side to predict what they're going to do. Do, do you know what? I'm just looking at their, their goals scored and goals against. They've scored 53 goals in 29 league matches and they've conceded 50. You know, <laughs> there's over 100 goals uh, involvement with them going forward and defending. So, yeah, absolutely no idea. And, and now I've just about recovered from that game on Thursday, <laughs> which even if it had ended, ended up 3-2, it's, I still would have said that was a great game. And yet for it to have gone into, what was it, eight minutes of injury time. And I said to Joe alongside me, look, there's still time for not just one goal, but two goals the way this game has gone. I, I didn't actually believe it would happen, but it was a dramatic ending. But I, I, one thing I would have to say to put a bit of sort of realism to it, I think we saw two teams showing exactly why they are a million miles away from the top three and chasing a Premier League title. But it made for an exciting game. Scott, it's easy to criticise. And part of our job is to analyse and criticise teams when they're not doing as well as they should be I mean Chelsea right in your opinion where do they go from this moment forward what do, like they've got a group of young players they've paid a lot of money from on long contracts what part of the team what do you think he needs to add to this this team to get them they've got to be in the top six minimum haven't they Chelsea yeah. as a football club and right now they couldn't I don't think they could be any further down the league than, than they are so well, do, do what's know- he going to do Dino, it feels like that, and that's the perception. But if you actually even look at the table right now, they're, they're only five points off Manchester United in six with a game in hand. You know, and that sounds crazy. If they finish the season well, you know, look, would I love them to see them win the FA Cup? Absolutely, and get past City. But we know that's going to be very difficult. But they could win the FA Cup, but they definitely could finish six, which, you know, would feel like sort of papering over the cracks. Where do I think? I think the bottom line is, what does the financial fair play allow them to do? Because they've spent so much money. You know, and if they get in the luxury tax, then maybe they can get away with with buying, you know, some more players. But if mm. I was to say there was one position to nail down, it's a, it's a reasonably obvious one, and it would be where you used to play up front. Mm. Mm. You know, Nicholas Jackson, I think, has, uh, he's had a lot of detractors, and I've defended him a lot. But he's still raw and he's one of those, if you've got a club that's wanting to chase at the very least top four, he, he should be coming off the bench to to make a different option, not be the person you're relying on. He's not quite ready for that yet. So I would put all my eggs in the basket of a striker because you know what it's like, Dino. You can play pretty badly as a team and if you've got someone like you up front who could nick a goal and then suddenly that back-to-back victories and, and, and the momentum changes and the, the atmosphere around the fans suddenly you know, get a lot better, then it's a much more in, easier environment to play. And it's amazing how that positivity can snowball. Yeah, you, you, uh, like I, I said yesterday tonight, you're only as good, whatever level of football you play at, you're only as good as your forwards, your strikers. You Both know, boxes. Both yeah. boxes. Strikers and goalkeeper. Well, um, well what, about, what about the heart of the defence, the two centre-backs? Do you think they're the right fit for Chelsea or do, does he need to go and sort that out as well? The spine. Well, well, the, I mean, well, the two midfield players are decent, Casado and... Um, Fernandez and they've got Palmer in there. That midfield, if they put Palmer in there as a three, and you got Gallagher in there, mm-hmm. that's not bad. Uh, like you it, said, a striker, two centre backs. It, it's not bad, Dino, but you know you, you need more from Chelsea, don't you? And I do like Enzo Fernandez. He's a World Cup winner. I saw him when he was at Benfica, and he was a he's, he's a fantastic talent. Caicedo is a lot of money's been spent on him, and it, look, I, I hate to talk about a price tag, but I think he's he struggled to deal with the pressure because we're not seeing that form that he had in Brighton. Cole Palmer's nothing short of sensational. And Conor Gallagher's probably been the second best player for, for Chelsea this season. But in terms of centre-backs, you're absolutely right. They're, they're all good individual athletes and defenders, but they're not really kind of leaders, you know, in the John Terry or even the Thiago Silva type. I mean, don't forget there's, there's Wesley Fofana who's been injured all season as well. He, he's yet to come back. So you would think that they wouldn't go out and spend another 50, 60, 70 million pounds when they've They've got so many centre-backs. And I actually think I like Trevor Chalaber as well. I think he's done well whenever he's played in the Chelsea shirt. So, look, I don't know what the finances are. I would suggest they're really getting close to the PSR 
uh, where they're going over the limit. So if I was to spend money, I'd go up front. I know you're working for TalkSport later on, aren't you? We're doing the Tottenham uh, Nottingham Forest game. Just your thoughts on what you're anticipating in that one. Well, look, I mean, fair play to Forest since they've had the four point deduction. They've won four points in the last two games. So, you know, in a way that 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 sort of got those points back. And we'll find out, I think, this week coming as to, as to whether they get an appeal and a, some some points back. Um, it's Nuno's first game back at Spurs. Yeah. Whatever he says, I'm sure he'll be desperate to win that one. I think for Forest, I think they look really dangerous on the counter attack. Morgan Gibbs White is is in sensational form at the moment. Yes, they miss a one but actually Chris Wood is scoring goals. Um, Hudson Odoi uh, and Alanga, I think suit that style. Morillo at the back is is a very good player, and the, and the goalkeeper sells. I think has added a bit of consistency, but they they are dodgy on set pieces. But in terms of Spurs. Look, they've got to take advantage of, of Villa drawing yesterday, haven't they? Simple yeah. as that. I, I mean, I, I still think fifth would be enough. But, but we'll, you need to nail down fourth just to make sure. And I was listening to you earlier, Dino, about Spurs. And you're absolutely right. You, did you know that they've won the second most points from losing positions? And they've got the fourth most points dropped from winning positions. So I think I think we know there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a roller coaster ride watching Spurs. But I think Angie's... As, as a big positivity now from, from last season. It's amazing, Scott, isn't it? Last season, you think back, Spurs, the way Conte set them up with like everyone behind the ball, sit deep, five at the back, and they lost the first goal 11 games on the bounce. Remember, the, yeah. remember that? Even yeah. when, and they were setting up defensively. And Ange is going the opposite thing. Mm. And it, it's amazing how t- two groups, the, the same group of players, more or less, our, a manager just changes the style of football that much complete opposites but I'd rather watch this team than last year's well, team definitely. absolutely and I was asked by Resh yesterday I was working on the City Palace game about Spurs you know they were fifth at this time last season and they're fifth now but one they've got more points two they've scored more goals since the early 60s um, and, and three there's just a completely different feel around the club look Spurs fans of course they want to win trophies of course they do but they actually want to enjoy their football and they haven't done for years and now they're absolutely loving going to the game and watching their team play at what is one of, if not the best stadium in the world. Brilliant. Scott, we'll enjoy it later on. Thank you for being Thanks, with us. Scott. Scott Minto, their former Chelsea defender. Just very quickly on that Tottenham Forest game. Obviously, it's a big game for Brennan Johnson, taking on his former side. Mm. From a Wales perspective, you've got to be delighted with how quickly he's acclimatised to life at Spurs. I think since the turn of this year, he's been invo- involved in more Premier League goals than any other Spurs player in the team. Yeah, he's, he's, I've watched every game he's played for Wales. I've, I've watched, like, not all his games for Forest and um, all his games for Spurs, but I've watched all his Wales games. He's just struggled to notch goals. Uh, his game is obviously sprinting going past people, crossing, threading through balls. But he needs to add more goals to his game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm pleased he's sort of getting a look in at Spurs yeah. because it's hard to get in that front three. Yeah. Kuliczewski, yeah. Son, Richarlison, Brennan Johnson. Who else they got? They, uh, I don't. I think that's it, isn't it? The four of them going, going yeah. for three spots. Well, he, as I say, he's had a massive impact. Um, seven goals. Seven goals he's uh, played a part in since the turn mm. of the year. So we're doing pretty well for Spurs. Uh, you'll be able to listen in to their game against Nottingham Forest because it's our game day exclusive, a special bonus one coming your way today. Coverage will begin at half past five and kickoff is at six. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.